the long-awaited video is finally here. What are my favorite settings for the new Juin Crane 2S gimbal? We're gonna be covering that in today's video, but for those of you who are new to gimbals, let me first show you how to quickly balance your setup. If you already know how to balance your gimbal, I'm gonna leave some time codes within the timeline of this video and you can just skip through. But let me give you a quick crash course on how to balance this thing properly because without balance, you won't have anything working right on your gimbal. First off, to understand a gimbal properly, you'll have to know that there are three different axes. You have the tilt axis, the pan axis, and the roll axis. That basically means that we'll have to balance this gimbal in three different ways. Let's start with the tilt axis. Once your camera has been mounted on your gimbal, make sure that the tensioner is loose. This will allow you to slide the quick release plate forward or backward. Your ultimate goal is to keep the camera pointing straight without drooping down or falling backwards. You want to make micro adjustments using two hands. Either push the camera forward or backward until the camera remains center without falling forwards or backwards. Once everything is centered, lock up the tensioner that holds your quick release plate. There is a secondary adjustment to your tilt axis, and that is the up and down adjustment. Loosen up the tensioner and make sure your camera is pointing upright. Our goal is to have the camera remaining pointing upright without falling forwards or backwards. Push the setup either up or down. If the camera remains pointing up on its own, then you have a properly balanced tilt axis. Now lock up that tilt axis and let's work with the roll axis. Similar to the tilt axis, make sure that your camera remains centered without falling to the right or to the left. Now loosen up the roll axis adjustment and push the setup either to the right or to the left. This again takes a lot of practice and patience, but once you get it right, you'll have a perfectly balanced roll axis. Once the camera stops leaning to the right or to the left, your roll axis is balanced. Now lock up the roll axis and the tensioner. Now let's balance the pan axis. A lot of people forget to balance this axis, and it's very important, especially if you use vortex mode. Start off by leaning your gimbal either over to the left or to the right. If you notice it's swinging around, that means it's not properly balanced. Loosen up the tensioner on the pan axis arm and push it forward or backwards until the swinging stops. Once the swinging stops, lock up the adjustment arm. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to balance your gimbal, check out this video right here. Now let's get on to my favorite gimbal settings. All of these settings that I'm about to share with you, I used on my trip to Utah with Kyler Holland. If you haven't seen some of my previous videos in Utah, I strongly suggest that you check them out right here. Anyway, if you click on the menu button on the bottom of the dial and then right click on motor, you'll notice multiple options, auto, custom, and level. If you select the auto option, the gimbal will automatically tune itself according to your camera setup. This doesn't always work, but for those of you who want a quick solution to let's say motor buzzing or motor vibrations, this could definitely fix the issue. However, if you do want the best performance, definitely use the custom setting. But before we get to that, let's talk about level. The level option gives you three pre-programmed presets by Juin low, medium, and high. This all has to do with motor torque. Low for lighter weight cameras, medium for medium weight cameras, and high for those heavier cameras. This is another quick solution to motor buzzing or if you just need more power in general. Now let's go to custom. We have the tilt, roll, and the pan. This all has to do with motor power. If you notice, I currently have rigged on my Sony A9, a camera cage, and a Zeiss 16 to 35 F4 lens. A very similar setup that I used in Utah, except I used the Sony A7S Mark III. All of the power settings on all of my axes are set to 5. If you have a similar camera setup like mine, this is what I suggest. If you have something heavier, definitely increase the motor power. You can right click on the dial and scroll to change the settings. Once you're done, left press on the dial and it will save your settings. Now left press one more time and scroll down to advance. Now right press. Here we have the speed, smooth, and dead band. The speed option refers to how fast should your gimbal move according to the movement of your hands. The smooth settings dampen the gimbal's movements, 
So how slowly do you want the gimbal to ease into that movement and slowly ease out to a stop? And this is good for the pan, tilt, and roll axis. The dead band is the amount of degrees you're supposed to turn your gimbal on any axis before the motors kick in to complete that movement. So for example, if I turn my pan axis, let's say five degrees, and I have my dead band set at five degrees, that's when the gimbal's motors will kick in. So if I pan to the right five degrees physically, then the gimbal's motors will kick in. And same thing goes for the tilt and the roll axis. Right press on the dial for the speed settings. We have the control and follow option. The control basically means joystick. So you can actually have a certain speed for your joystick and a certain speed for the actual motions of the gimbal. For the control settings, I set a default since I rarely use the joystick. Here are my follow settings. Tilt is set at 90, roll at 85, and pan at 70. Again, to change these settings, right press on the dial and scroll to your desired number. If you have a similar camera setup like mine, it could be a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter. I found that these numbers are very good. When you're done adjusting the settings, left press on the dial and it will save. Now go to the smooth settings. My tilt is set to 125, roll at 120, and pan at 155. My dead band is set to tilt at 5, roll at 5, and pan at 10. So my goal here was to get the smoothest and most stable shots possible, which is why my numbers here are higher than default. So if you want, give these numbers a shot and let me know in the comment section below how this worked out for you. These are the same exact settings that I used in Utah and I'll tell you right now, they worked just fine and it made the gimbal perform even better than when I received it straight out of the factory. Another little bonus tip here is the key setting. This refers to the trigger. So the trigger on the gimbal here will allow us to go into full follow mode and you can use this mode by either holding the trigger or tapping it, but make sure you set this setting. So that's what the trigger option is. Right press on the dial, and here are the options. So this is all about preference. Mine is set to hold or click, and those are my gimbal settings. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video has helped you out, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel with those notifications turned on, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.